Charles, one of the other things I really wanted to cover with you was your, I, I think you do a great job marketing your business. We've talked about some of the ways you separated yourself uh, with your customers and your clients. But one of the things that I really want you to discuss is just your overall general philosophy on marketing, what you were doing in the past, what you've been doing along the way, how, what you've learned. And I think we'd be a little remiss if you didn't maybe touch a little bit on what you think might change with your marketing moving forward, you know, specifically as it relates to the coronavirus or just what you think is going to change here in, in construction. Our approach to marketing is virtually the same thing that we do on the job site. We talked about this in, in some previous things of we're worried about the client. What does the client need to be better? And so our marketing really is that, is that way too. So we're giving a lot of information. You know, the client wants to see their project. They want to see nice, pretty video of their project as it goes together. They're emotionally invested in this project that they've put hundreds or thousands of hours into. So we're going to definitely showcase those projects and let them see it and let their friends see it. We're going to share information with them either in person in their office or with a lunch and learn or with videos on YouTube or on the different social media channels or different things that we send out that help them be better at their job with the things that we know, which is our scope of work. So help them understand how to QAQC our work, how to understand our work, how to help direct their project regarding the things that we do in Division 7. And so our, yeah, our marketing is very similar to the way we put work in place. And that's really be focused on what does the client need to be better. And then we don't really ask that much. We find that if we give a lot and we do have that ask of, hey, you know, let's do this job together, uh, that, that ask is, is welcome because we've been giving so much before that. So if you think about this, it ties back to that whole thing of helping the client get to their goals or be better at their thing. So birthdays, anniversaries, these things mean a lot. That's an emotional tie. So as a marketer, or as a business owner, you wanna tie your business name and the things you, you do every day to an emotional connection. And birthdays are a really good way to do that. We've found that a lot of, uh, a lot of our people that we work with, our clients, they, their own companies don't even remember their birthday. You know, the card that they get from us might be the only thing they got that day from somebody outside their family. So it has a really emotional connection and impact, and it's very, very long-lasting. People remember these things for a long time. Uh, so just an example, I don't believe I have one handy, but we do pocket knives for birthdays. So it's a pocket knife, and it's got their name on it. And then we've got a birthday card that is signed by everybody in the office wishing them a very happy birthday, and they receive that. Now, this is a big task because you have to have a database of all your clients, their contact information, where they are, what company they're at, how to get to them, what their birthdays are. It's got to be accurate. Otherwise you look like an idiot. So this is a lot of information and it's hard. And that's why most people don't, that's why most people don't do it. And so I think that in marketing, you've got to look, what's that next step? What's that really hard thing that you don't want to do, but nobody else is doing it. So you really should do it. And that's what we found is the real differentiator. What's the hard thing to do to connect to your client? Go do that. Because chances are your competitors won't. No, you're right. It's invaluable. And anytime you're attaching a memory to you and your business of something you've done, that's really been emotional to that person. It's going to be more memorable and more impactful. And those are two great things every time. But how often do you get gifts? It's just got, they send you a gift. We're going to use gift loosely because it's just an item that has the company's name on it. That's not for you. No. That's just general. They're giving you a generalization of, well, we kind of feel nice about you. But if somebody goes through the effort to document all these things, it took us forever to get all these names and emails and, and, uh, and addresses together and birth dates. But once you do that and you identify that you care about them as a human being on their birthday, which has intrinsic meaning and something special, something custom, something you made for them, it's, a, it's, really a, it's really a very important connection, I think. But we don't give anything to a client without their name on it. Does anybody throw away something with their name on it? Absolutely not. They keep that thing forever. So we've seen these, these different colored Yetis that we've given to people. They're five, six years old. They're just beat to shit. And they're still carrying that thing around on the job site every day because they love it. It's got their name on it. And that's really cool for, uh, for us and our brand and for what we stand for. And they really cherish that. So that's cool. I would say... Putting somebody's name on a gift is really impactful. Just don't give it to them if you can't put their name on it. I'm trying to think back. Have I thrown anything out that had my name on it other than junk mail? And I would say, I'd probably say no. <laughs> you should see our office around Christmas time. So we might send out five or 600 custom gifts around Christmas time. 
can you imagine the volume? Like, how do you keep track of that many custom gifts? You got to check the names. You got to check the addresses. People move between companies all the time. You got to make sure you're taking it to the right location. Yeah, it's a logistical nightmare, but it's totally worth it. And I, I definitely kudos to my wife, Alicia, who handles all of those elements of the business. And she does a next level amazing job to get that done and keep it organized. Everything goes out wrapped nicely with a bow on it, with the name tag, you know, our branding, their name, custom gift. It's awesome, man. That's definitely an impactor. People are going to remember that. What are you doing different now with the coronavirus, I guess, in general? What what are your thoughts around the impact of the coronavirus? What's happened? I mean, there's so many, it's impacted everybody. There's, there's no country, there's no person, there's no industry. Everybody's been impacted. What are the things you've done differently? How have you adjusted or maintained or, or et cetera? Yeah. So construction has been incredibly blessed. If you think about it, even across the country. Now, Texas has been sheltered maybe more than some, but uh, there's a few states that have had some construction shutdowns, but for the most part, construction, construction suppliers, construction manufacturers are still being able to operate. And that is, that's just amazing. We're very, very fortunate uh, to be in that position, very thankful. But if you think about it, the world has changed a lot for construction and for everybody else. Like, yeah, we can still work every day, but the way that we do that, the way that we connect to our clients, the way that we get information from our job sites, the way that we interact with our team members, the way that we train for us has been very different. You know, we can't have, we can't have that training meeting every Monday and pack 120 guys into a room. And that doesn't work anymore. So we've got to come up with ways, you know, like how do we do this and film it ahead of time? And we text out a link to everyone so they can still get the same information, but on a screen of a phone instead of in person. And then how do you connect from a screen of a phone is not the same emotional connection as it would be as if you were in person. So now you do it in smaller groups. Now you do it one-on-one. You've got to find a way to connect. I think to your, to answer your question more specifically about the client relationship, connecting with human beings is a really, really important part of construction. Like, yes, we build buildings, but hey man, we are in the people business. And that's not going to change with technology, with new building methodologies. Like we're going to be in the people business forever. And because of that, we can't lose sight of the fact that coronavirus or not, you still have to find a way to connect with the people that are in the business. So finding what are the ways, what are the ways we can think outside the box, come up with something new to get a contact, to get an emotional connection. Like we mentioned here, I'll show you an example. This is the alpha pex pandemic first aid kit. If you can see that it's whiskey and beef jerky and a mask. So it was a huge hit, you know, superintendents, project managers are just getting beat over the head every day with all this Corona stuff and having to sanitize job sites and, you know, make sure everybody's washing their hands and check temperatures and all the different protocols. And that whiskey and beef jerky was really impactful. That's a cool gift. So that one was just, just outside the box. What's something we can do that will allow us to connect with our clients for just a second, just to get there and let them know that we care about them, that we're here for them if they need us. And it was a challenge to get all those delivered because, you know, some people at the office, some people at the house, some people on the job site. And so we were able to get that done and send out a few hundred of those. And it was pretty neat to see the reactions, but we've got to think outside the box now. You know, finding new and creative ways, man, and helping people when, when no one else is, or when fewer people are is so important. And if you just generally focus on helping the person and helping people in general, anyone you come in contact with, but especially your customers, especially your team, you're going to be so much better off. And it's so much easier to manage your business because the decisions are are easier. You do what's right. You just do what's best for each person and yeah. doing something extra special for someone in the point where they're, especially when they're getting beat down by everybody is a memorable and uh, honorable thing. Yeah, really is. You have to have the long game in mind. This, uh, this stuff that we do is not a short term thing. You don't see a, res- a, um, a monetary result quickly. No, no. And, and you don't, you're not doing it for a monetary result either. Right. And who knows, you'll, you'll never tie an ROI to how many custom gifts you bought. You know, doesn't mean you, you can add more money to the project. Doesn't mean any of those things. It just means it's what's right. It helps separate you. It keeps you more memorable in a game where everybody's, everybody can be very similar. Right. Yeah. It's a differentiator. And I know absolutely for a fact that if you show people you care, your business will grow. 100%.